Hello, everybody. Coming to you from California. Nice, sunshiny day today. Probably changed in a few hours, but that's okay. We're alive, and so we have the opportunity to speak to people about their soul's condition. And so that makes it a good day. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made, so we would should rejoice and be glad in it. All right, I'm going to be talking about a subject, as you can see from the title, that... Uh, Moral courage is suppressed by fear. You know, every now and then we hear stories that uh, are kind of uh, enlightening to us and uh, kind of help us out. They're touching our hearts and things. Uh, we hear about people risking their lives or giving their lives that others could be saved and and that uh, that get harmed in threatening situations. And I'm sure we all would like to feel that if we were faced with such a tragic situation, like a, maybe an auto accident right in front of us or uh, somebody being in a dangerous situation, if we wouldn't run over and would we even have the courage to help someone who is in danger? And sometimes we don't think about it. Uh, it's like the idea of running into a burning building if we knew someone was inside. Uh, if we, if we heard of an adult being inside, we well, we'd figure that out, but a little baby inside, what would we do? Well, we'd probably run and try and do what we could to save that child. And of course the officials would say that's a bad action. And, and honestly, common sense will tell you that's not a very smart thing to do. So they tell us we should leave that job to the professionals. But there's not always a professional around when someone is in a dire circumstance. So we just do the best we can with what we have to help people. And so there's a, probably a lot of people who would do this. And, and it doesn't matter what their spiritual condition is. There's, I've seen people uh, of all walks of life uh, come to the aid of others when a situation comes up. So sometimes they're even willing to risk their own life to save someone. And so, but the problem is there's not many people who would care about a soul that was in danger. And that's a real tragedy. You know, sometimes we, we've seen recently, you know, people sitting there and then we've seen the meme on Facebook where somebody's over there drowning and all the, everybody's standing around with their cameras, uh, uh, taking, photos of that event taking place. And so, and we heard in Florida about those young men who just let a man dry, drown and they laughed about it. But uh, for the most part, people are usually good to others and they come to the aid of each other. And really when tragedies happen, like storms come through, uh, people kind of pitch in and help each other along the way. But we also know there are souls all around us who are on the pathway to hell. And we know that if we just maybe offered a soft word of encouragement, we might help them to examine their spiritual condition. So the question is, why are we not bringing up the subject of God or spiritual mindedness with the people we meet? All right. The answer. Fear. Fear is the reason we don't do it. See, we, being selfish, basically, we are afraid of ridicule. We're afraid that someone will be upset with us. We're afraid they might call us names. We're afraid that they may not want to be around us anymore. And so we have to be aware that if we're going to claim to be a Christian, we're going to suffer persecution for our faith. You know, first Timothy well, three and verse 12 tells us that. Yes. All who, I think that's second Timothy three, 12, all who desire to live godly will suffer persecution. So we, we have to be aware of that. And so we can look for an example to look at is, you know, in Hebrews chapter 11, the great hall of fame of faith. And these people had faith in God. They suffered some horrible things. You know, read chapter verses 32 to 38 about people being sawn into and murdered and killed and 
all sorts of horrible things done to them. And so these great patriarchs of our faith also demonstrated willingness to die for the Lord. And all the apostles, uh, save one, uh, met some sort of horrible death, uh, a martyr's death. And so, yes, we should try to be like them. Our faith should be so strong that we're willing to die for God. You know, Jesus was willing to die for us. We should be ready to do the same thing. But to be honest, it's not likely that such a need for this type of courage is going to happen today or the next day or the day after that. We won't find ourselves in some physical situation where uh, we couldn't just call 911 and somebody respond within a few minutes to help somebody. <clears throat> so, and honestly, I don't think we want to be in that situation either. But the opportunity to speak and tell people about God and Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ, which can save souls, uh, that's an opportunity that hits us every day. And it's not out of the realm of possibility that anybody you meet might be someone who's actually seeking. You know, John 4, 21, Jesus explained that there are people seeking to worship God in spirit and in truth, and they just don't know how. They haven't been directed or guided. And as we talked about like Esther uh, the other day, who knows that you weren't put in this position for such a time as this. We don't know if God isn't using us to be there to give an answer, to give someone a word of encouragement, just to mention something about God and recognize that it's a beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made. I mean, just saying that uh, ought to be something that someone will start thinking, well, yeah, I've heard of the Lord. I'm, I mean, he's in, written in the Bible, but they, maybe they don't study the Bible. So, you know, there is danger every day out there in the realm of possibility of needing courage just to share the gospel message is something that we need to be faced with. You know, years ago, there was an American preacher that was uh, imprisoned in Iran because he was helping people uh, find the gospel of Jesus Christ. And of course, in that country, that is illegal and carries the death penalty. Luckily, the State Department and political pressure was put on enough where they finally released the preacher. But uh, still, all, all over the world, brethren are suffering. They, they suffer many trials by various governments or political influence. I mean, look at our current situation here with the virus. I mean, they've shut down churches and they've threatened churches to arrest everybody who goes to a church and uh, find the preachers and the churches for having services, things like that. I mean, these, these are things that we have to face with. And so all of these are tools that Satan uses against us because Satan wants to deprive us of heaven. You know, I've said this many times. If you don't know anything else about Satan, you need to be rest assured of this. Satan is going to keep you out of heaven with every tool he has. That's all he does. He, he wants to keep you out of heaven. So uh, we just need to be like this. So these fears that we have, these are tools of Satan. Because let's face it, nobody likes to be embarrassed. And, and sometimes even the ridicule of non-believers can do that very thing. It embarrasses us. I, I mean, you know, have you ever had someone say, and you call yourself a Christian? I mean, when we're trying to do our job and we do it best and we make wise decisions and someone accuses us and you call yourself a Christian? I mean, that's very painful. And so we don't need to fall into that trap that Satan puts before us. See, the value of the souls of those around us cannot be measured by how I feel about myself. Think about that. I can't be worried about myself and my own self-esteem or uh, not being embarrassed or being chewed out or called names because those people need to hear the truth. If they choose not to abide by the truth, well, that's on them. 
but it's my job to tell them about this. That's why Jesus went to the cross. He died for these souls and God sent his son to die for these souls. And for me to deprive anyone of the good news of salvation, simply because I might be embarrassed or I might be labeled or worse, rejected by friends and family, is nothing but pure selfishness. Hebrews 12, 15 says, see to it that no one is deprived of the grace of God. So, I mean, we, we should be telling people about the gospel, about salvation, about God, and of course, all morality and things that the Bible talks about. We should be telling these to others, but because of our selfishness, because of fear that uh, we, we do these things. See, there's a definite danger that we will deny Christ. And you might say, well, I'll never deny Christ. Well, do we need to remind you of what Peter did? Three times he told the Lord, I will never deny you. I will not deny you. I, and he, he got so irate about this because Jesus kept pressing him that he actually began to start cursing and swearing that he would never deny Christ. And then just a few hours later, what did he do? He denied him. So he denied him three times. And so, yes, it can happen. It can happen to you. It can happen to me. And our selfishness will keep us from saying what we need to say. So we need to realize that victory is in Christ and salvation comes to those that love the Lord and obey the commandments of God that's found in the Bible. And we can overcome all of Satan's weapons against us by putting our trust in God and Jesus and doing his will. So consider those thoughts. I mean, it's something that we need to do. You need to have that moral courage to stand up and be recognized for Jesus. You know, Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're against me. So when people look at you, do they see someone who is with Jesus or not with Jesus? I mean, there, there is no middle ground. There's no neutral territory. And you really can't be neutral in any of this. We have to be for Christ. And so we encourage everyone to be for Christ, living for Christ and helping others uh, on the way to find the Christ. So that's our lesson for today. Think about these thoughts and realize that uh, any moral courage that we think we might have can be suppressed by our fears. And so we don't want that to happen. We don't want you to be uh, caught up in this. So consider these thoughts and just go out and enjoy the day. Share the message if you get the opportunity and uh, I mean, I'm not saying press it on people, but at least offer the opportunity and look for that opportunity where you can mention something about the Lord. The Lord made the sky. He made the, the plants. He made the beauty of this earth. Here we are in, in beginning of May, the flowers uh, all around the country are, are very beautiful right now. So talk about the beauty that God has given us. And just a few examples, just a few thoughts to help you to bring up the subject of God and how you do believe in God and how God has the way of salvation. He's provided it for everyone. So consider those things. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, share this message with somebody else and let them uh, have the opportunity to apply these things to their lives. And it will be better for everyone involved. So you have a good day now, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.